welcome to this week's Swarf and Chips. We're joined by Cromar in the studio. This is what's coming up on today's show. And Paul, Gio, and myself would like to welcome Ben from Cromar. Thank you so much for joining us, Ben. Thank you for having me, Lindsay. It's a pleasure. So, a lot of people in the industry will know who you are, but not everyone's going to realise that they've got a lot of your products inside their workshops. Is that right? That's right, yeah. We've been in business 60 years, family owned business. Um, specifically involved in handling swarf. Mm -hmm. So whether it's swarf conveyors, separating swarf from coolant, chip buckets, anything to do with removal of swarf, we're involved in. Would, if, if you were to look at a, a percentage of businesses that you thought that cut metal that might have your products, what do you think it would be? I'd like to think 100%, Paul, but probably about 70 but that high, because mm. that, that's probably a good message to start, isn't it? That you know what, that leads me on to actually, Paul, and we haven't planned this, but this then. Is it, am, I right, am I okay to bring this yeah. out so soon? Because that puts yeah. you as the king of Swarf and Chips. Yeah, it does. Yeah, so yeah. you're going to have to wear this now. <laughs> so I don't know who bought it, this, but it needs Does it fit? Right. <laughs> that's why you've got a glass of wine, you know. <laughs> 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 Tea. Like Henry the Eighth. <laughs> you look amazing. Thank you. <laughs> okay. So. Ben, every, everyone's uh, aware of how uh, swarf and chips are manufactured, mm. but why is it so important uh, and how they're removed? Well, the whole point when people buy a machine tool is for the machine to run and hopefully to make them plenty of money. And the key, key item is to make sure the machine is running and there's no downtime. So if you don't have a conveyor, you have to manually empty the machine of the swarf. You, know, you have health and safety issues uh, associated with doing that and also downtime so it's critical that while that machine is running you have a conveyor getting rid of the swarf that's being produced it's true. number one i would have been guilty in the past as well of selling machines and just literally adding a, a conveyor in into the order yeah. without mm. actually considering mm. firstly where it had come from mm. uh, secondly whether and i notice on your website you talk about scraper types uh, and slat type conveyors I wouldn't really know which one was for the right sort of application. I wonder yeah. how many engineers do have a conveyor that maybe isn't necessarily ideally suited to what they're doing. Probably quite a few, but I think things are changing, and that's really from an educational point of view, whether it's the people selling the machine tools or our company working with the end user and getting around. And Are you saying that they're more knowledgeable now than they were when I was there? I think there's a good chance. <laughs> 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 yeah, but, but I don't know, you never tried to sell me a machine. So. Ben, can yeah. I just go back a little bit? Yeah. How does the company work? Because are you dealing directly with the end user at times, the OEMs, or both, or we, individually? We work with both. Um, our main business is working with the OEMs. We have a very good relationship with many machine tool builders and dealers. And it's important that we work with them in developing the right products for their machines. Mm. Because they're aware of what the applications are, they're aware of what their customers are doing. So they will work with us mm. in developing the right system for their machines, for their customers. But we also work closely with end users because mm. there's some older machines out there, uh, maybe more specialist machines that aren't necessarily supplied with a, a conveyor or a filtration system from the OEM. So we'll work with them and develop a, a solution. And long term, you know, you're d <coughs> developing a solution with them, but is it to every single machine? What, what, what are your filtration systems, your swarf conveyors going on? Is it bespoke? Yeah, well, I mean, any machine that's cutting metal, producing mm -hmm. swarf, producing chips, I mean, there's different terminologies there. In the UK, they use swarf. In Europe, they use chips, so swarf conveyors, chip conveyors. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but any machine, that's any machine that's producing swarf and chips um, is a potential customer of ours because mm. they want to get rid of it without manually getting involved and, and providing that there's no physical restrictions and you can put a conveyor in there or a, a conveyor with inter integral filtration you know we'll work with that customer put the solution in and support it i reckon so, we know someone that can clear chips faster than you <laughs> could that be joe <laughs> <laughs> different, 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 sort of, <laughs> different sort of chips but yeah. we can move on to that later Tom. Okay. Well, i'm going to take this he's going to fall off my head yeah take it off <laughs> It looked good though. Thank it you. Good. Ben, everything, like, thank you for letting me visit your facility last week. You're everything, it was, it was fascinating. It was mm. a real education to me, and we'll move on to that as mm. well in a bit, Lindsay. Everything's manufactured in the UK. Yeah. 
and um, that, that's, a, that's also a, a big feature in regards to the quality and longevity that's of right, your yeah. product. Yeah. And why, why is this? Well, as a business, we understand you know, that our customers need support and they need a good product. And the only way for us to provide that was to do everything ourselves. So over the past five years, we've invested over three and a half million pounds in the company. And that was relocating to a, a more suitable facility new machines, new infrastructure, new personnel, and that all goes towards providing that service. So we build everything, we design everything. There's nothing that we do not do that we supply. It's all done internally at Chroma. And I think that's a good time to go over and see Geo at Chroma. MTD on location. Today we have a unique opportunity to find out how Swarf and Chips conveyors are manufactured here completely in the UK. Come on, let's go and take a closer look. This is where the raw material, the sheet metal work comes in. And behind me we have the Amada machines where they get punched. Next step, fabrication. Moving on to the laser section, this is a fully automated section where the material is being automated and fed into the Mazak fibre laser cutting machine. How about this for a link? They come in different widths, different lengths. Each segment is individually assembled, which is the perfect link to the assembly. Now moving on to the assembly and test area. This has been a real education today. They don't only manufacture standalone swarf conveyors, but full swarf management systems. This one here in its final stages, which is integrated with high coolant pressure, filtration down to sub 10 micron, through spindle coolant, touchscreen PLC control. Now to the final stages, behind me the Swarf conveyors are ready to be shipped out. These have been fully manufactured complete in the UK and you can see the variety behind me. Now we all know how Swarf and Chips are produced but hopefully this has been an insight into what's involved to remove the Swarf and Chips. Geo, though, what did you learn from the day? Well, uh, Lindsay, from my past experience, I've always overlooked Swarf conveyors. It's just been a part of um, the machine that, that I never really looked into in any, in, in any great detail. But going to see, one, how they were manufactured, the quality and what it actually entailed was um, an education in itself. But also, you know, when talking to Ben about the old, from the conveyors to the Swarf management systems, these can actually um, increase the productivity of the machine and they're in, an integral part of the machine, especially when you're looking at the multitasking machine. Without, without a doubt. I mean, it's not just about getting rid of the swarf. It's about managing the swarf, mm. managing the coolant. And if we can do that, which we do, as one package solution, um, it's great. You know, we can design them to suit a, a certain space restriction that might be outside the machine. So. You know, we're providing the full solution of uh, managing the coolant swarf. But even when you're buying these new iTech <coughs> machines that are producing lots of swarf, they, these machines have evolved over the years significantly, mm. producing more swarf. If you're looking, and everyone's looking to run lights out now yeah. to make more money, um, and, it, and in that, when it comes to that kind of scenario where it's unmanned, mm. um, that that conveyor needs to, to run. Yeah, and it, and that's where we work with with the with the OEMs because things are changing in, in industry. At the front end, it's a lot of autom a lot of automation. And as a result of that, you're producing more swarf, there's more coolant. So the systems at the back end, which is what we're involved with in processing the swarf and the coolant, they have to evolve. And we have to develop that product with the OEMs and also with the customer because they're the guys who experience, uh, have the experience in working with these, uh, these applications. And, and you have, when I visited site a few weeks ago, mm. you've, you've started working towards the industry four as well, haven't you, on some of your products in like um, you know monitoring how the swarf conveyor is performing in conjunction yeah. with the machine. Yeah I mean some of these solutions we're supplying with, where we're integrating the, the swarf and the coolant management you know people need information you know it might not be you want to do anything about it but as long as they're getting that information it's quickly it's accessible and it's easy for the for the user to, to understand um, yeah vital and we're trying to incorporate new products in, a, in, in development at the minute but 
if, in our systems. You know what's really interesting is the past few Swarf and Chips that we've taken part in, we're often talking about future-proofing, and that's exactly what Industry 4.0 is doing, looking after your products, not just today, mm. but going forward and working with technology. Yeah. What other products do you bring to the industry then? So we have our Swarf conveyors, Swarf management systems, high-pressure coolant systems, but we also supply mist extraction, spin windows, chip buckets, wash guns, oil skimmers, a lot of ancillary equipment that's supplied or required on the machine tool to uh, ensure it's clean and it's running as it should be. And everyone can go direct to yourselves for all of those as yeah, well. They can always come and talk to Chroma. Would no you install problem. those as well? Yeah, we offer the full facility, so anything we manufacture and we supply to a machine tool, we can fully support with an installation. Chargeable, but You'll do it. We'll do it, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Nothing's for free. No. <laughs> it certainly isn't, yeah. Even that wine. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Paul. <laughs> I'll enjoy it then. <laughs> well, I'll let you down that now, because right. you've got to go over to Technical Corner and join Joe. Okay. And when you come back, you can tell us all about your after-sale service. Great, okay. okay. Thank you. <laughs> Technical Corner. So yeah, Ben, we're here in Technical Corner. Mm -hmm. Machine tools are getting more and more complex, producing more and more swarf than ever. Yep. Is that a challenge to your company? Yep, it's always a challenge, you know, handling swarf, handling coolant, always a challenge. Um, but we're up for a challenge in our business, you know. We, we build our products to suit the market, um, number one. We look after customers, you know, it's all, all part of providing the right product for the customers. Yeah, and we can see the your facility in the background. What, what percentage of your product actually gets made here in the UK? All of it, 100%. Really? All of it gets made within our own company. And design and manufacture? All in, in, our, in our building. Okay, so the majority of it, would it be standard product? or you know, How much of it's bespoke to a machine well, tool? Well, we have a standard standard chip conveyors, so your basic hinge conveyors or your scraper, which is supplied on your smaller lathes. Mm -hmm. They're all a standard theme. Um, but then you go to your swarf management where it's more bespoke. So one customer might have experience with a certain machine and a certain application and they've had problems so we'll address that and make a bespoke solution for that customer. Can you give me an example, you don't need to mention client names, but no. give me an example of how that would look. Yeah, so we'll, we'll visit site for example if there's an issue um, in handling aluminium or cast iron and we'll talk with the customer, um, whether it's with myself, with one of my technical engineers, one of my sales colleagues and we'll go through, uh, go through the problems and then once we've identified what they are We'll then look at working out a solution, take it back to our, our factory, design it, manufacture it, deliver it, then support it. Okay, and Swarf, that's a big part of the process, but obviously mm. there's a loss in, 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 in the <clears throat> coolant as well. What, what happens with your coolant? Yeah, well, it's, it's all combined. So where the Swarf, generally speaking, there is cutting fluid, so your coolant. So what we tend to do with our product, we, we get rid of the Swarf and then you have your coolant, um, which, is, which is used for your, for your cutting tools. And then we process that through various filters, and again, it's which filter suits that customer. Yeah, so you're essentially you're saying you can buy a bolt-on product, a stock product, but yep. also you can do the whole bespoke solution as well. Yes, we can, yeah. So we can do your standard products and relatively quick deliveries um, and from our facility. Because we do everything ourselves, it gives us flexibility to offer mm -hmm. quick deliveries and quick solutions. But yeah, taking it to bespoke, bespoke solutions, whether it's a standard conveyor or swarf management, bit longer on delivery time because there's more involved but yeah so i'm presuming most people now buy machine tools also have a conveyor or if i went back 10 years ago it was almost an afterthought is that still the case yeah in in, in some cases some people buy a machine don't buy the conveyor really uh, which is quite incredible really because they have such a high value um to the machine tool but you've got to keep it running, haven't you? Swarf yeah. processing is a huge part of the process well the number one the number one thing for anybody buying a machine is making money and the machines make money by being in operation. So if you're not removing your swarf automatically with by, by a conveyor, and you're having to physically, manually remove it, that's downtime, and that's a cost. Mm. And just finally, you know, you do see other conveyors, other brands, some from other parts of the world. Mm. How do you compete with uh, lower cost economies, and are they, are they a threat? We have to consider them. Um, we have to be realistic. and. Sometimes they, are, they can be a threat, but the, the reality is, if you're buying a machine, you're buying an expensive machine to do a service, you need it to be supported. And what's number one, if you're buying a conveyor from us, it's fully supported, it's a high quality product, fully built in the UK. If there are issues in the years to come, all spares are ex-stock, 
we can offer it with full support with my service team and installation team. So it's not just about the initial cost when you buy a conveyor, it's about the long-term benefits you get from buying it from a UK manufacturer mm. like ourselves. So there you have it, you've heard it from the Swarf King, you buy cheap, you buy twice. Well done for coping with Joe in te Technical Corner. It Impressive. wasn't easy. Wasn't yeah. Easy. Yeah. Yeah. You got there, you got there. Thank you. So he finished his chips by then. <laughs> you guys are in <laughs> Now, I want to ask you, after sales service, sometimes mm. it's something that is not really covered enough. What do you do for your customers? Well, what we try and do is we try and, if we supply a pro one of our products to a machine tool, we want to support it, that machine tool for its life. So that it might run for five years in one factory and then go somewhere else for another 10 years. We are supplying a product that we can provide spare parts for, X stock, within 24 hours for the conveyors or the equipment we're supplying to industry. Uh, but also, uh, equally, equally important, if a conveyor gets damaged or a telescopic cover gets damaged, mm -hmm. it's very important that the machine tool user can have it repaired quickly because they need to get rid of the swarf. Nothing changes, only that it's not working. So we have a facility within our, within our company where we can offer quick turnarounds of repairing swarf conveyors, whether it's manufactured by my company, manufactured by competitors, and we can turn it around quickly. Telescopic covers, exactly the same. You might have bar ends dropping in there. It damages it. You can't run the machine for a long time with a damaged cover. Similarly, with a, with a conveyor, do, and it's important it gets repaired. And we can do that. that. Do you think that's a reason why some of these OEMs don't bring in conveyors from overseas? <clears throat> they, they they go to you because they know that if there is an issue, it it's, is poor. It's, it's, it, it's very beneficial to buy locally. And when I say locally, if I if I say the UK and Europe, we're supplying a lot of conveyors to Europe, but we can offer a great service. You know, it's easy to to move within Europe nowadays. So, how we can support a UK customer? We can also support a European customer, and the main the main reason why the machine tool dealers or machine tool suppliers are buying our equipment is because they know that support's there. They know if there is a problem, they can pick up the phone, send an email, and we'll respond and we will sort it out. Is this um, you know to cover but Brexit? Is that affecting you in that way? T to be honest, I, I I'm not a politician. I don't understand Brexit, and I'm not really <laughs> bothered about it. All I'm bothered about is making and supplying our product to our customers and working with them. Yeah. That's all that matters to me. We do, 50% of our stuff goes to Europe. Mm. It may affect them more than it affects us. I don't know, yeah. and, we, and we will see. I think we're all feeling and that, we actually, yeah. to be honest, we're kind yeah. of waiting, aren't yeah. we? Yeah, we'll, so. we'll see. I don't think anybody knows, Lindsay. No. So you're at Mac? Yes, we are, yep. Yeah, are you excited? Very excited, yeah. We'll it's be displaying long. all our products there. Yeah, it's not long to go either, is it? Not so. long. Um, we're looking forward to it. It should be good. We've had a lot of feedback from customers. They're all having a, a big uh, drive for Mac exhibition, so so are we. Yeah. And I can return the wine, Paul. <laughs> yeah. We'll have plenty on our stands. What, red or white or, or both? Whatever you want. Or mix together. It's all there. Yeah. And it's good yeah. to hear that end users can come to you as well, yeah. you know, rather than just the, uh, the OEMs. Any CNC machinist, they can all come to us and we'll work with them, absolutely. Thank you very much for joining us. That's I've got okay. a little treat for you. Thank you. And, you know, you've got a choice, but um, you've got a goodie bag, which right. we're giving away now. Yeah, so great. here thank you go. Thank and you, you've Lindsay. got the cap as well, so if you want to wow. wear that. Cap and a, th a throne, eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, sorry, a crown. Yeah. It's been a yeah, pleasure having the king's. Yeah, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> not yet. It's that Game of Thrones, I keep watching it. <laughs> you've got a choice now, okay, you can great, choose. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, thank you. Thank there you go. Thank you. Cheers, Ben. Cheers, Ben. Cheers, guys. Thank you for watching this week's Swarf and Chips. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. And if you want to watch any previous episodes, click on the links here. We have something so exciting. We are giving away before Christmas £1,000 in cash and it's going to be given away live. Yes, live. We've never done this before on next week's show. If you want to get involved, visit the website to find out more. And as we always say, keep those spindles turning.